Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are going to compare the Ryzen 7 3700X and Core i5 10600K in a few games, but we'll be doing so with low or competitive type quality settings in games such as Fortnite, World of Tanks, Rocket League, and about half a dozen other competitive titles. And as a result, the frame rates will be quite different to the game tests featured in our CPU reviews, where we test with high and ultra quality presets in modern and often very demanding games, such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2, to name just a few. And although we use a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti graphics card and test at 1080p, as well as 1440p, in many instances, performance is still more limited by the GPU. Now, we're not talking about a hard GPU bottleneck here, but the GPU is often the more performance limiting component. Of course, that doesn't matter too much because using an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p is already a bit unrealistic, as most gamers with a $1,000 plus graphics card would play these modern AAA titles at 1440p using high quality settings. When reviewing the Core i5 10600K, for example, we noted while the Ryzen 7 3700X was just 5% slower at 1080p, that margin might grow slightly in more CPU limited scenarios, like playing titles such as Fortnite, for example, with competitive quality settings. And this led me to recommend the Intel processor for those of you who have to have every last frame possible. But for everybody else, I just think the 3700X is a better value, more well-rounded product. Still, it would be good to know just how much more performance you can get from the Intel processor, and if that extra performance is something you can actually take advantage of. Now, for this test, we're looking at the out-of-the-box performance with XMP loaded using CL14 DDR4-3200 memory, but we're not power limiting the 10600K. Still, in our original review, we found that a 5.1 gigahertz overclock could boost gaming performance by as much as 12%, so keep that in mind. Also, depending on how popular this content is, I could spend a few more days adding in OC results for both CPUs, but I honestly don't believe that will enrich the content, given what we found in the past when tuning AMD and Intel CPUs for maximum performance. Intel CPUs typically enjoy more headroom when it comes to core frequency, but AMD CPUs benefit massively from memory tuning, and in the end, that really does result in similar performance gains. So for testing, I've got nine games to look at, all of which have been tested at 1080p and 1440p using low quality settings with both an RTX 2080 Ti as well as an RTX 2060 Super. Starting with Battlefield 5 at 1080p using the low quality preset, I have manually removed the 200 FPS cap, setting it to 600 FPS. The results with the RTX 2080 Ti still look as though they are frame capped, but I assure you they aren't. The 10600K, for example, peaked at 211 FPS in our benchmark pass. Interestingly, both CPUs maxed out the RTX 2080 Ti at just shy of 200 FPS, and we see similar results when using the RTX 2060 Super. Standing still and looking at the sky, for example, we would see frame rates spike up to around 250 FPS, but when actually executing the benchmark pass, frame rates rarely went above 200 FPS. Despite dropping down to the RTX 2060 Super, we see very similar results, which is interesting because the 2080 Ti with the ultra quality preset is around 50% faster, though that's based on our 1440p data, which we'll look at now. Moving to 1440p, and here we start to see some separation. These results really do hint at a frame cap for the 1080p testing, but that wasn't the case. Anyway, at 1440p, the 10600K was up to 6% faster than the 3700X with the RTX 2080 Ti installed, though the 1% low performance was virtually identical. What's really surprising to see is the margins extended with the slower RTX 2060 Super. Here, the 10600K was 9% faster. You'd expect the margins to close up with the slower GPU, but that wasn't the case in Battlefield 5 using the DirectX 11 API. So these are some strange and somewhat unexpected results in Battlefield 5, but it is worth noting that while slower, it would be near impossible to tell the difference between the 3700X and the 10600K. Next up we have Fortnite, and for this test, everything has been set to low, with the only exception being draw distance, which has been maxed out using the epic quality setting. I'm also using the DirectX 12 API, and the testing takes place in a 20v20 Team Rumble game before the first circle closes. Fortnite is quite a difficult game to test with, at least if the goal is to report accurate data. This is because about once a week, Epic breaks the older replays when updating the game, forcing me to create a similar replay. However, I've noticed that even when recreating the exact same benchmark pass, the results can be quite different to the previous replay, depending on where the other players were and what they were doing. 
In the past, when using the epic quality settings, this difference wasn't that noticeable, but with the low quality settings, the results could vary by up to 100 FPS, which is quite insane. So for this testing, I created a replay on the Intel test system, then copied it over to the AMD test system and ran all the benchmarks on the same day, allowing me to provide an apples to apples comparison. And here we see that on average, the 10600K was 8% faster than the 3700X, hitting 352 FPS. The Intel processor was also 12% faster when comparing the 1% low data, but it's worth noting that both pushed well over 200 FPS at all times in our benchmark. That said, we are quite heavily CPU bound in both scenarios, as we see when dropping down to the RTX 2060 Super, that frame rates only decline by around a 5% margin. It's also very interesting to note that the margin between the 10600K and 3700X actually grows slightly with the slower GPU. Now the Intel processor is 12% faster when comparing the average frame rate, and 18% faster when comparing the 1% low data. That is quite a significant margin, but again, we're looking at well over 200 FPS at all times with the Ryzen processor. So for those of you rocking a 144Hz monitor, for example, that's probably not going to be an issue for you. Things do change quite a bit at 1440p, and now we're starting to see GPU bound results, at least when using the RTX 2060 Super. The 10600K was still up to 14% faster with the RTX 2080 Ti, and despite both CPUs delivering well over 200 FPS at all times, that is a decent performance advantage for Intel. But for those of you using slower GPUs, such as an RTX 2060 Super, you're looking at up to an 8% margin in favor of Intel. And looking at the numbers, I think it's fair to say even pro gamers wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Moving on to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive results, and for this test, I'm not using the Steam Workshop FPS benchmark. Rather, I'm going with a custom benchmark pass on the Vertigo map against some bots. Full disclaimer, I don't play CSGO, but for those who do, they tell me that the FPS benchmark isn't indicative of actual gameplay performance, so hopefully this custom pass is more useful. So testing at 1080p, we find a strong CPU bottleneck with both the 3700X and 10600K as the RTX 2080 Ti and 2060 Super results are virtually identical. But what's interesting here is the fact that the 3700X is actually faster than the 10600K, delivering 8% better average performance and 22% stronger 1% lows, and this is seen using either GPU. The 3700X was also able to keep the frame rate above 200 FPS at all times, whereas the 10600K dipped down to 184 FPS. Now, I'm not sure how much difference that really makes for most of you, but I do see CSGO gamers often claiming that you need at least 300 FPS in this title for competitive gameplay. Again, not a CSGO player, so I have no idea how true that is, but if true, a 20% boost to 1% low performance will be quite significant. For casual gamers though, I'm sure 180 FPS is still cutting it. Even at 1440p, you're looking at very similar margins, and here the 3700X was up to 14% faster. This is a slightly surprising result, though going into this, we knew CSGO was a title where the third gen Ryzen processors were extremely competitive, but it is nice to validate what we saw previously when testing this game with the very high quality settings. Rainbow Six Siege was featured in our 10600K review, and using the ultra quality settings, the 10600K and 3700X were very evenly matched. The Ryzen CPU was slightly slow when comparing the average frame rate, and 5% slower when comparing the 1% low data. Here we're seeing with the low quality settings that the performance is virtually identical with the 2080 Ti. The 3700X was just 3% faster when comparing the average frame rate, but that is also within the margin of error. That said, we do see a 7% performance advantage for the 3700X when using the slower 2060 Super. Not a huge margin, but it does indicate that the Ryzen CPU is a little faster in this title. Though it's worth noting that with these competitive settings, both did enable over 250 FPS at all times. Increasing the resolution can increase CPU load, and here we see that the 10600K does drop off when using the RTX 2080 Ti, trailing the 3700X by a 17% margin when comparing the 1% low data, though the average frame rate is more comparable. Then when using the 2060 Super, we find the results are largely GPU bound, with a very slight performance advantage going the way of the 3700X. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is a title we know to play better with Intel CPUs when using the high quality settings. So unsurprisingly, Ryzen loses here with the very low quality preset enabled. The 10600K was up to 17% faster when using the RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p, keeping the frame rate above 200 FPS at all times. Dropping down to the RTX 2060 Super sees the results become entirely GPU limited, and now there's no difference between the 3700X and 10600K. We're looking at basically the same margins at 1440p using either GPU. The 10600K was up to 20% faster with the RTX 2080 Ti and just 4% faster with the 2060 Super. 
Here we see that frame rates in Call of Duty Modern Warfare using the low quality settings are very competitive. The 10600K was at most just 5% faster, and I think it's fair to say even the most pro gamers won't be able to tell which CPU they're using. Of course, we see much the same at 1440p. The 10600K was up to 7% fast when comparing the 1% low data with the RTX 2080 Ti, but overall, the experience was much the same. Rocket League has a 250 FPS cap, but you can remove that by editing a configuration file, and I've done exactly that for this testing. But please note, unless you make this modification, the game's frame rate will be capped at 250 FPS. And with the frame cap removed, the 10600K destroys the 3700X in Rocket League, boosting 1% low performance with the RTX 2080 Ti by almost 40%, and the average frame rate by 24%. Of course, with the frame cap enabled, both will deliver the same 250 FPS, so how relevant this data is, well, it's hard to say. Moreover, when using a more realistic GPU for this title, the margins are neutralized, and now the 3700X and 10600K deliver the same performance with the RTX 2060 Super. And the margins seen at 1080p with the RTX 2080 Ti do close up quite significantly at 1440p, and now the Intel processor is up to 22% faster. Of course, we see the same margins when using the RTX 2060 Super, which is to say there is virtually no margin. So while the 10600K is clearly the fastest CPU in Rocket League with the limits removed, I do question how useful that extra performance is, especially given the game has a 250 FPS cap by default. Next up we have World of Tanks using the HD client, but with the minimum quality settings enabled. Here we're looking at a strong CPU bottleneck as both the RTX 2080 Ti and 2060 Super see the same level of performance. That said, we're also looking at over 200 FPS at all times, making the 10600K up to 13% faster. This is another game where I'm not sure going over 200 FPS is beneficial to anyone, so the margin seen between the AMD and Intel processors could very well be irrelevant. Demonstrating just how CPU bound we were in the previous set of results is the 1440p testing which shows virtually the same numbers and again both CPUs enabled over 200 FPS at all times. So there's not much more to say on this one. It's my understanding that World of Tanks is a relatively slow paced tank shooter so I don't believe going well over 200 FPS is all that beneficial and I reached out on Twitter, created a poll and it seems like the vast majority of people who play World of Tanks feel that about 144 FPS, around that for your 144Hz monitors, is more than enough. Last up we have War Thunder, and this one we're looking at some pretty extreme frame rates using either GPU. In both cases, we are CPU bound, looking at well over 350 FPS at all times, so surely at that point the margins become irrelevant. It's pretty much the same story at 1440p, here the 10600K was up to 14% faster, but the 3700X dipped to just 348 FPS, so Again, I'm, I'm not sure how much those margins matter. Finally, here's our last graph, which looks at the performance as an average across the nine games tested. With the RTX 2080 Ti, the 10600K was 10% faster than the 3700X when comparing the 1% low data, but just 2% faster with the RTX 2060 Super. So I think it is fair to say, for most of you, the performance differences between these two CPUs and games is going to be largely irrelevant. Well, some slightly surprising results for sure, but I think overall this comparison went pretty much as expected. Again, in my Core i5 10600K review, we found that the Intel processor was on average 6% faster than the Ryzen 7 3700X when it came to gaming performance using high to ultra quality presets. In this test, we found when using the low quality settings in a number of competitive titles that the margin was extended to 7% or 10% if we focus on the 1% low data. Certainly not a significant difference and it changes nothing that was said in the original review. For those of you who missed that review, basically what I said was, if you want to ensure maximum performance in most games, then get the 10600K, but for the most part, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference between the 10600K and the 3700X when gaming. So that being the case, I ended up recommending the 3700X for its stronger productivity performance, which you will often notice the benefits from, and I also expect that those two extra cores will come in handy down the track. Also, as I noted earlier in this video, yeah, you can overclock the 10600K for even better performance, but you can also tune the 3700X for even better performance as well. And I guess you have to ask yourself, 
do you really need more than 300 FPS? Looking back over the results, we saw comparable performance in Battlefield 5 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, while the 3700X was actually faster in Counter-Strike, where we were seeing well over 300 FPS on average, and slightly faster in Rainbow Six Siege, where we were seeing over 400 FPS on average. And then we saw that the 10600K was faster in Fortnite, Rocket League, and World of Tanks. But again, these are titles where both CPUs allowed for over 300 FPS on average. And we also found that the Intel CPU was faster in PUBG, but again, in this title, both averaged over 200 FPS. So again, you have to ask yourself, how much does that extra performance matter? How much do you need those, that extra seven or 10% more frames when you're doing over 200, 300 FPS, or perhaps even more? For example, when going from 300 to 330 FPS, that would be a 10% increase, you're looking at a 0.3 millisecond improvement in latency. And once you exceed the refresh rate of almost all modern monitors, the only benefit becomes input latency, and we'd say 0.3 milliseconds is imperceptible for virtually everyone. Now, don't take any of this the wrong way. The Core i5-10600K is the faster gaming CPU, so if you are primarily gaming, it makes sense. You'll potentially pay a little extra for the cooler and motherboard, but in terms of value, it makes out pretty well in a gaming-only scenario. But from my point of view, you'll almost never notice the difference between the 10600K and 3700X in today's games. And there's quite literally zero chance the 10600K will be the faster gaming CPU in three years time. I'd say worst case for AMD, the margins remain the same. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I am very interested to hear your feedback on the testing. Uh, did the results surprise you? Did you find this information useful? And do you feel this sort of testing is worth doing in the future? And of course, if you enjoyed the video and you appreciate all the testing and time that went into it, then please do give it a like and you can subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already. Also, if you'd like to become more involved with the channel and also support this kind of work, then you can join us over on Patreon. You will get access to our exclusive Discord chat where you can chat with Tim and myself. Uh, we do a live stream each month, at least one. Uh, again, you can chat with Tim and myself live there. And we'll answer questions and things like that. Uh, there's behind the scenes videos, Q and A's, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, if you're interested, links in the video description, you can check it out. If not, that is perfectly fine. Above all else, thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.